Agent Nation, my name, of course, y'all know me now, it's Agent Beamstar. Let's get right into the news. There's a lot of news, you know, 2 k is around the corner, so the news is kind of ramping up. I don't know that I'm gonna continue these after 19 drops, there's not gonna be much news. We'll see how things go though. For our first story of the day, NBA 2K League was dropping some bombs. We know for the first season, I believe they had 17 teams. For the second season though, there's four teams in the NBA that wanna buy in. Those include the Lakers, the Hawks, the Nets, and the Timberwolves. Now, for the first season, the 17 teams had a three-year, $750,000 buy-in. We don't know the details. We don't know the team names, what the buy-in is for these. We don't know nothing yet. We just know that these four organizations are gonna be joining the 2K League next year. So we know. Actually, what we do, I think that's a little bit of information now. You won't believe this because it sounds so unbelievable. And I hope they end up changing this because it sounds ridiculous. The Hawks organization's team name is going to be Atlanta Hawks Talon Gaming Club. You don't think that's too many syllables? Who's going to remember that? Who is going to remember all of that? For our second story of the day, there's some drama in the Twitterverse, ladies and gentlemen. NBA players are furious. Well, one in specific. So, we know, if you guys have been paying attention, NBA 2K has been dropping ratings the last few weeks, right? They dropped Jason Tatum's rating, gave him an 87. Universally, unless you're a Boston fan, and even if you're a Boston fan, chances are you agree, that's way too high. At some point in the season, maybe by the end of the season, he might reach an 87. He shows a lot of promise. The ceiling is really high for the individual, but he's not an 87 yet. Okay, so that's that's at the root of this. They they released Blake Griffin's details and his overall yesterday, and um, I'll just put it like this. People weren't really happy. Blake Griffin has an 86 overall. Immediately, people began comparing regular season stats, putting out graphics like this one showing Tatum's regular season stats versus Blake Griffin's regular season stats. And it has a teammate of Blake Griffin's pissed off. Reggie Bullock put out a tweet saying, I'm glad I don't even play games. I don't even know who Ronnie 2K is. Well, Bullock, Ronnie's not the one who does the ratings. You probably should have sent the at at a different direction. Mr. Stauff, Stauff, Stauff. He's the one who usually does the ratings. Usually he's on point with the shits. I don't know what he's been up to this year, but he's bugging. And this is probably the, the angriest I've seen people about ratings ever. Now I know ratings are gonna change over the course of the season, but yo, if you think Tatum should be over Blake Griffin, my guy, you are bugging. And uh, that's what the rest of the internet agrees unanimously as well. For our next story of the day, there's some drama between NBA 2K YouTubers, Annoying versus Nay. Now, Annoying was on stream, and he was kind of just talking. He was basically saying that he helped make clout up some individuals in Nade's clan. Now, I don't really pay attention to this stuff most of the time, but usually when something like this drops, people send me a lot of Twitters, and they're like, listen, Agent, this was happening. So, uh, this, let's just roll the clip, all right? Well, I just seen a video on, t uh, on, on Twitter this dude annoying saying that um, I didn't make anyone, that he made everybody, that he made Saver, he made Quill, he made Cash Out, he made Drowsy. My nigga, you ain't do shit. You lucky I put you in this position that you're in. You lucky I'm banned on Twitch. Why is he talking about my name? Keep my name out your mouth. You ran off to the PS4 to go make some money. You don't care about the fans, nigga. You don't care about us, nigga. You, 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 you was always a fan of me, nigga. You was, now you want to hate on me, nigga? Just watch on 2K19. Just watch. Just watch. You ain't make anything, dog. All you care about is your little money. You don't care about the fans. You always lying like a bitch on, on YouTube videos. You a bitch. Fuck you. You a bitch. You think I'm scared of you, nigga? You a little ass rat, nigga. A little fucking mole rat. Smack the fuck out of you. Now, it, it felt like Nade was using his indoor voice. Either one, he's in a library or two. His mom is sleeping in the next room. I remember that whisper because I used to record GTA 5 videos doing the same thing. Anytime my mom wakes up, she used to come with the slipper, shoop, hit that shit like a dart. She said, don't wake me up. I was like, sorry, mom, I had to record a video. That's when I knew I had to move out. That's beyond the point. Um, honestly, don't really care about the drama, but you guys kept asking me about it, and uh, they're going back at it. <laughs> at the end of the day, a Lil Uzi said this one bar in one of his songs that was like, it went something to the nature of, if you made me go ahead and make another one, almost say like, yo, I did this shit on my own. So no, really, nobody made anybody, right? I collab with a lot of small YouTubers, but I didn't make them. If they didn't grind, they weren't growing. So it was on them at the end of the day. Boy, said that you made me. Huh. Go ahead and make another one. Yeah. For our next story, there's some more drama. This time, it's Swante 
who's mad at annoying. Now, I don't have any context for this one. Swante just kind of put out this tweet and it says this. Lol, someone tell annoying lame ass that I have a whole job and mad responsibilities and always have. Not everybody can sit at their mom's crib and stream 12 plus hours a day for years or I'd easily pull more than you. Stop hating on, can't get demonetized, sorry Swante. For no reason, this ain't no competition for me. He followed up saying, I think I'm doing pretty good for all that I balance, lol, Jesus Christ. You, sorry, I, I gotta make money somehow. Take this internet so serious, so toxic. Now, at, just based on what he's saying, it sounds like at some point, Annoying was taking shots at Swante's viewer count. I don't know. Swante has some pretty entertaining streams. I was in there last night. He was talking all kinds of shit about me, but it's still entertaining though. It seemed like YouTubers are just beefing all of a sudden. I don't know where all this drama is coming from, talking about views and shit. Let me start some beef, all right? Phantom, your ass! Davis, you look like Grodd. Is that how you say his name? <laughs> Troy Den is the worst rapper in the 2K community. That song he did was incredibly cringy. Tell me why Cheese looks like Joker in this picture. All right, that should do the trick. Next episode, I'll be in some drama. <laughs> For our next story of the day, uh, you couldn't have missed it. NBA 2K released this new My Team trailer. And I'm not gonna lie, bro, I haven't seen the My Team community this excited about anything in a while. Now, I would sit here and react to it, but I assume you already saw it. So I'm gonna point out the things that I found noticeable, and then we'll move on. One, I don't know if they added a color correction or did some sort of color grading, but in general, the colors look more vibrant. It seems like maybe the saturation is higher. There's more contrast in the photo. When I say photos, I mean videos. You get what I mean. They changed, of course, like they do every year, the card designs, so they look different. I think this year's card designs look more aesthetically pleasing than they did last year. Okay, now this part was easily the most interesting for me. This looks like a park. It looks like stage or ante up, and it's just a, a video of Giannis driving to the rim and doing a between the legs dunk. This is what I guess Blacktop is gonna look like. I don't know if they have more courts. This is what I've been telling 2K for a very long time. If we could do this on the park, I like the option to walk around in a neighborhood, cool. But I also like the idea of having matchmaking where, I, where you could just load in and play in iconic parks. So I like, this is cool and all. It almost looks like a banquet hall that's <laughs> placed in Hong Kong or something. But it'd be really nice to play in Rucker Park or or Hoop Dome, Venice, like all these iconic places that we know so well. Can you imagine? All you have to do is click matchmaking and then it matches you up with someone your rank and it throws you into a beautiful looking ass park with low latency because you don't have to load in everything else. That'd be the dream. So anyway, I'm happy for the My Team guys. They seem gassed about this right here. The UI on My Team looks incredible. Ah, oh, it looks like they might have taken a page from EA's book. The user interface, yo, is on point. It looks so appealing. I remember the days in 2K14 where I couldn't even look at the menu because it looked hideous. This is like a serious glow up in 19. If it's something that no one's talking about, I appreciate it. Anyway, that's really all there is to it. Um, let's move on to the next story. For the next story of the day, let's make it quick. Uh, Travis Scott is curating the soundtrack for 2K19. Whoa, is that the, that's the little booth out? Hey, he was okay. I mean, I wish, I wish I would've went the same time as LeBron, that would've been iconic. Here's the track list if you care. Travis Scott is curating the playlist. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to mute this stuff because I don't want to catch copyright. So I haven't listened to a soundtrack of 2K seriously in like years. So I really don't care about this. So let's move on to the next one. For our final story of the day, Mike Wang is back at it again, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what he's been up to or how he's gotten the approval, but he's been talking about a lot of information, specifically the TakeOver badge, which if you guys don't remember, is like a grand badge in 2K17. It's like when you play good enough, you get a TakeOver badge and it pretty much gives you temporary superpowers on the court. And he was giving some details for every archetype and their specific TakeOver badges. Before we get to that though, somebody hit up Mike Wang. They said, Mike Wang, is Wang pronounced with an A? or a O sound, I wanna know how to say your name correctly. Now, obviously, if you're using logic in this specific circumstance, Mike Wang, it has an A, it's Wang. Obviously, that's what I thought. Because Mike Wang's name is pronounced Wong. This changes the whole foundation of our virtual relationship. Mike Wong. It's like I don't even know you anymore. It's like everything I knew about you has been a lie. When I was in first grade, I was too afraid to tell my teacher that even though my name is spelt D-I-N, it's pronounced Dean, so the whole year she was just calling me Din the whole time, and I just had to take it on the chin. 
And then eventually my mom was like, stop being a bitch. And she just told her like, yo, you've been saying the name wrong the whole time. And then my teacher was just looking at me like, yo, I don't even know you anymore. So this is how I feel about you right now, Mike Wong. Whoa, okay, I'm gonna call you Mike for the rest of my life now. <laughs> And Davis's reply, someone's gonna make a video on this. I did it, it was me. It wasn't a dedicated video though. That would be crazy. And I did consider it, not gonna lie. I was gonna do like this whole meme thing and I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. It's doing the most. All right, so he's been putting out a lot of tweets about the takeover badge. Just think about it like this. If you're a sharpshooter, your shooting attributes get a magnificent boost when you're on the takeover badge, right? Not only do you get an attribute boost, but he's saying the green window gets bigger and becomes easier for you to green your shots, etc. If you're a slasher, you get super extra cool looking dunks. If you're a playmaker, you get in crazy more dribble moves. Just think about it like that. Whatever you already do that's your primary archetype, it's like you doing that but on steroids when you're doing the takeover badge. But there was one archetype that had some abilities when the takeover badge is activated that I found really interesting. So let's go ahead and get into it. Mike Wang said, glass cleaners got a lot of love this year. One of my favorite additions in the new takeover is they get a target on the floor showing where the ball is gonna go on missed shots, gives them a huge rebounding advantage. They also get elbow clearouts after offensive rebounds prior to putbacks. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that if you have a glass cleaner on your team, not only is he gonna be elbowing folks out the way and getting a bigger advantage rebounding now, but the second your shot goes up, you're just chucking shots up, he'll know if it misses, and he'll be able to go to the spot and get the rebound. That is in. Insane. Now I know takeover bads only last this long and Mike Wang clarified that the higher your overall, the more upgraded your player is, the longer your takeover lasts. So everybody has takeover, but if you're like a 60 overall, the shit's gonna last like this long. So imagine if you're like a 99 overall glass cleaner with takeover and it lasts like six or seven possessions. That is a massive advantage. And it, I don't know what brick wall is gonna be looking like in, 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 in 19, but glass cleaners, I don't know. I seen a lot of those tweets in the glass cleaners one I gotta get my eyes on. Somebody sent out a tweet, they're like, yeah, shout out to the guys, by the way, who tweet me when some shit pops off, because sometimes I'm not near my computer and I look at my phone and I'm like, oh snap, something's going down. So uh, Rob will sent me a tweet, he said, I hope agents catching all this Baluba replies because he's coming with the heat. Mike Wang replied to that. Yo, I'm telling you, bro, oh, Mike Wang. Mike Wang is a huge fan, because he said no classroom videos and he sent me an app. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I need you guys to know that ever since I recorded that video, because I tried going back, I'm banned from going there. They started locking the doors to those lecture halls now. So if you guys missed the video, I'll, link, I'll leave a link above. Basically, I was trying to give this class presentation using the big PowerPoint in a lecture hall that proximity chat needs to be in the game, and there's no game where it fits better than NBA 2K. So if it was to be in 19, that'd be massive. So apparently Mike Wong himself saw the video and he said, no more classroom videos, agent. I don't know what, I, listen, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, hey, let me find out. Let me find out they put proximity chat in there. Let me find out. We had great minds think alike. I really hope so. It'd be a game changer for 2K19. Yeah, yeah, y'all thought I was joking. Mike Wong is my biggest fan. He be watching all my videos. He's on Notification Squad. He sees all the secret Notification Squad messages. He be in the comment section on burner accounts. Yo, he thinks he thinks I don't know, but I really do, man. I know. So uh, Mike Wong put out this tweet uh, just about a week ago. Maybe it was like four or five days ago. And it sparked massive outrage. And people were going back and forth. Basically, he was asking, what should have more influence on a made shot? Being open or the timing of the jump shot? and everybody was going at it. I was on the timing side, of course, and a lot of people were on the openness side, especially the playmakers, bro. A lot of those playmaker dribble heads were on the openness side. And people were going back and forth on Twitter for a very, very long time. Now, one of the things that Mike Wong made clear before going at that, and I won't even touch that subject, because that's a whole nother video on itself, and I don't even want to make that video. That shit's been done and been passed. Mike Wong put out this tweet, and he clarified saying, timing is much tougher, and if you get a defender nearby, you can expect to see a lot of bricks. But a pure sharp and takeover left wide open with good timing is gonna hurt a lot of teams. Which is like literally the exact response I wanted to hear. I want, I want to be sure that the people shooting very early and slightly early are missing more and the people shooting good and perfect are making more. The guys shooting all white should be rewarded. The guys shooting half bars should be punished. That's the way games should work. That's what a skills gap looks like. So when I voted timing, it was with this in mind. You should be able to, at the highest degree, take control of the things you have control over. One of them is not taking bad shots. And Mike Wang is making it clear, not only is timing tougher, but he's mentioned in the past that contested shots won't be dropping the way they did in 18. 
and especially 17. So if you've been shooting contested shots this whole time, getting bailed out, ladies and gentlemen, it is gonna be a rude awakening when 2K19 comes around and you're breaking all your shots. Now that's about it. He went all in on the takeover badge. I even put out a tweet seeing if Mike Wang, Mike Wong would invite me to the 2K headquarters. I wanna do an interview, ladies and gentlemen. I wanna walk around with my camera and ask Mike Wong some questions, some very hard hitting questions about 2K. Uh, it would be the most fantastic, iconic video of all time. That's all I'm saying. Uh, that's all there is for the news. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Click on one of these two videos, by the way.